Are you a business owner or entrepreneur who's had great success in the business world? And now you want to launch a speaking career to share your message with the world. If that's you, then listen up. 25-year speaking industry veteran Brett Ridgway has released his latest special report, Three Key Things Entrepreneurs Must Master to Build a Profitable Speaking Business. To pick up your copy, go to brettridgeway.com forward slash freebie. Welcome to the Spotlight on Speaking Show with Brett Ridgway, where you'll learn the keys to building a profitable speaking business from speaking industry pros. Each week, we interview a great guest who will share his or her speaking journey, identify what their keys to success have been, and highlight some critical mistakes they've made along the way that you'll want to avoid. Be sure to visit our website at spotlightonspeaking.com. And while you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, sit back, tune in, and get ready to meet this week's guest. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Spotlight on Speaking show. I'm your host, Brent Ridgway, and I'm excited to have as my guest today, Chelsea Fournier. Now, Chelsea describes herself as an intuitive and empath, a one-third generator in human design. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> a boy mom and on the cusp of being a homeschooling mom. She had a previous career as a small business lawyer in Maine, and has spent 12 years as a business coach. She was the co-founder of two successful startups that are still thriving based on the systems and foundations she helped to establish. She's now a business strategist and marketing agency owner, working mostly with purpose-driven coaches, healers, authors, and speakers. Welcome, Chelsea, to the Spotlight on Speaking show. Thanks for having me, Brett. I'm excited. So let's just dive right into your speaking journey. So a lot of the people I interview on the program are what I would call professional speakers. That's their thing, whether mm -hmm. it's a keynoter or a, a person who is speaking out of, to sell from the platform. Mm -hmm. Now, the third type of speaker that I haven't interviewed a lot of, so I'm excited to do this with you today, is yeah. a person who is primarily used speaking as a marketing tool as it just a yeah. biz very what i would call a, a biz builder speaker or whatever which mm -hmm. you have in your in our work up to this episode describe yourself primarily in that realm so yeah. let's go back when when did you first decide that as a business person you needed to get in front of people and, and share some of your wisdom and expertise as a way to pull them into your world so that when they had a need for your type of product or service, mm -hmm. they would then reach out to you. Yeah, I'll share a specific story. It's actually from my previous career. So when I was in Maine, I was a small business attorney and I was specializing in trademark law. And so that's protecting like logos and taglines. And in the state of Maine, maybe a small niche of businesses really cared about that. But I decided as the young, naive attorney I was at the time, I was going to kind of beat the drum of bringing information about how trademarks and how licensing can improve your business. And I started to go in and do small presentations to chambers of commerce, to entrepreneurial groups, and even to marketing entities. So like marketing agencies to say, hey, here's how you can refer to me. And I was doing several of these types of what I would call small speaking, just kind of presentations, things that I cultivated relationships through. And someone called me and said, I got your business card two years ago at a small, an SBA event that you had done. And now I'm ready to do trademarks. And you were the first person I had your business card pinned to my cork board for two years. And so I realized then that A, I really enjoy teaching. And in many ways, teaching and speaking can go hand in hand, depending on the, the format and what you're doing. But I also started to realize that when you have that direct energy connection, someone sees you on a stage or someone sees you on a Zoom, it, it boosts that credibility, it boosts the authority. And if they like how you present things and they feel like you could explain them in a simple way, in all of my lines of work since doing that, uh, you know, all of those presentations across the state of Maine on trademarks and setting up LLCs, every other version of work and business that I've created I have focused on either creating workshop presentations, collaborations, speaking on other people's podcasts, so that I can use that as a awareness platform instead of just hoping to go viral on social media, actually having real conversations in front of people. 
Okay, so I've got to ask, why did you decide to get out of the attorney game? Oh, it's a long, messy story, Brett. But I owned at the time a law firm with my now ex-husband. And when he became my ex-husband, decided to say, what do I really want to be when I grow up? <laughs> so I had been um, really in Maine. There was no one doing business coaching. When I started training in kind of the business coaching world, there was really two schools back then. And I went through one of them. And I really enjoyed bringing business coaching into how I worked as an attorney, but also I was doing like some moonlighting of having some executive and business coaching clients on the side. And so when I started to make some transitions, I realized that I loved the aspects of helping business owners that are not just the law and being able to kind of zoom out and look at the bigger picture of what business owners are doing. And so now fast forward, you know, several years when I decided to really start honing my expertise in on helping the businesses of coaches, healers, authors, speakers, what I call kind of the change makers, us rebels trying to bring new messages out to the world. Um, I realized that I wanted to bring my support out for them and also to continue to speak to this audience because just the connections happen so, so beautifully. So in the world of running an agency and all that, what's your go-to yeah. topic when you do speaking these days then? Yeah. I love talking about email marketing and funnels. They're two topics that a lot of people maybe have heard big gurus who explain it in complicated ways and then kind of make you feel like you can't actually take a step forward. But remember, I like teaching things that are complex and making them feel simple. And so I really enjoy speaking about how really designing a marketing funnel is just thinking through a thoughtful client journey. It's really incredible for speakers to think this through of what do you want someone to do if there's you know, if you're doing a keynote speech and you've got a slide and there's a QR code, where do you want that QR code to go to? And really thinking through how does speaking and being in front of an audience actually bring in those leads that you're excited to grow your business. And then um, email marketing, I just like to help people understand that they can do it their way. There's a lot of people who feel like I have to email my list once a week and I just got to like get that done and it's not fun and I hate doing it. And you can infuse your own personality and intuition as well as strategy so that it feels like um, a really intimate conversation. So those are the two topics I love talking about. We, we support both of those in the agency that I run. In your story that you told shortly ago, Chelsea, you basically talked about the payoff two years down the road. They kept your business card yeah. and two years later they came to you. So mm -hmm. in the short term, when you go do a, a speech in front of an organization, yeah where the payoff maybe isn't immediate, how do you measure whether a talk is successful or not? Hmm, that's a good question. I do feel like more and more I've been doing more digital, like podcast speaking, speaking in front of, um, I'm actually a part of a summit that's launching two days from now from when we're, we're recording this. So I feel like what's nice about things that are online or hybrid is that you should start to see email subscribers. If someone likes how I present about email marketing, in the actual summit. And then they're gonna be like, oh, let me click through and kind of cyber stalker. I think there is that benefit of seeing faster return, especially really thinking through the audience you're gonna to try to get in front of. And I will say when I had that one that came through that said, oh, I, I have your card from two years ago. At the time when I was practicing law, I also brought in way more new clients than most of the partners in my firm. I was just a skinny little girl in a banana republic suit, right? Like just starting my legal career. But because I was getting out there, people were calling me much sooner. But I also loved that there was that long-term payoff that people remembered me. So I would say now seeing, you know, email subscribers, and I know that some speakers really go that route and some speakers may not, but I really believe that growing my email list, that asset of how I can best and most closely communicate with people who've seen me speak or worked with me, is an asset that's worth growing. And so I love seeing like, oh, someone just opted in to the free quiz or the free pricing guide or the thing that tied into the topic I spoke about. So when you're going to do a presentation, what kind of homework do you do in advance of a speaking engagement to determine what the best message for that particular audience might be? Hmm. Well, I do love when there's the opportunity to interact with the host beforehand. So for example, for this summit, I had a quick 15 minute call with the host before I had applied. So um, there's several Facebook groups that I'm a part of looking for podcast guests and speaking connections and summit speakers. And some of them, you fill out an application. I'm sure some of your audience listeners know this. 
Um, and so maybe you fill out an application, maybe you have like checked off a box of a topic you want to speak on, or if people are at a much higher level, then of course, there's probably a specific signature talk they're being brought in to, to speak. Um, but I really like to, if there is something on the host, like I listened to several of these episodes before getting on, so I could kind of know the cadence and how long you like it to be and, and get to know the audience and the message that you really try to bring. I think the more you can just focus on the audience itself and the value you can bring so that it will, if there is a percentage of people who are listening, who are like, I like how you presented that you're going to be someone that they trust and someone that's been put in front of them by someone they trust as a host in most cases. So I try to get to know the host, try to get to know how they like things to come out and most importantly, the audience and where they might be at in their own journey and how I could impact them. So for a person considering doing some speaking to help build their business, mm -hmm. give me maybe let's say three tips for success that you would want to pass along to somebody who hasn't spoken before, but they mm -hmm. recognize value that it could bring to their whole marketing platform? Yeah. One is just networking, putting yourself out there that you're looking for this type, especially if you've not done one before. People in your network just, hey, I'm, you know, I would like to get on more podcast episodes this year. If you know anyone who hosts a podcast and a similar topic, like putting it out to your network that you're looking for that, if, especially if you're brand new to it, getting some of those warm introductions will be amazing for you. The second is really to think through what is the purpose if someone is interested, let's say you're on an interview and it goes viral, right? If you're doing it online, let's say it goes viral, people are excited about it. How is it going to grow your business? So thinking through the opt-ins, the freebies, typically at the end of any presentation, you have the opportunity to say, how can people follow you? Or what could people do if they want to learn more about this topic? Being thoughtful about that and making sure that the back end is set up for success so that you are able to grow that email list, give value and stay in touch with them. And then I would say for me, I am a human design guide, an energy reader. Um, for me, it's also a lot about intuition of really thinking through like, does this feel like a good opportunity? Does it feel like a good person for me to be collaborating with? Um, I think sometimes we are only in our left brain and strategy and really what you're excited about is likely a great way to also follow, um, you know, if you get pitched someone that you're like, huh, I'd never thought about doing that topic, but I'm really excited about it. Oh, why? You know, maybe following that that tether and seeing where it could go. All right. Well, great advice, Chelsea. And I want to dive a little bit more deeply into your sweet spot, so to speak, in terms of what you do now. But before we do, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. Are you a business owner or entrepreneur who's had great success in the business world and now you want to launch a speaking career to share your message with the world? If that's you, then listen up. 25-year speaking industry veteran Brett Ridgway has released his latest special report, Three Key Things Entrepreneurs Must Master to Build a Profitable Speaking Business. To pick up your copy, go to brettridgeway.com forward slash freebie. And we are back with the Spot Island Speaking Show. And my guest in this episode is Chelsea Fournier. And Chelsea, you're an agency owner now. And so you work with all types of businesses, mainly solopreneurs from what mm -hmm. we've you know, discussed and all that. So you mentioned funnels. And funnels is a term that most authors, speakers, coaches have certainly heard. Yeah. But for, for speakers, what have you found to be most effective Mm -hmm. in terms of what type of thing to offer as a lead magnet to get people into your world. Yeah, I'm going to share a story about me being in the audience and then to specifically answer this question. So for a while, I was in the direct sales industry. And if anybody's been in direct sales or network marketing, you know, you go to these big conventions and there's big speakers. And I had the opportunity to be in front of Andy, Andy Andrews, Bob Proctor, Mel Robbins, and there was one, Kendra Hall, and if anybody's read her book on storytelling, I just sat there and thought it was so genius. She was presenting about storytelling. She had the ability for you to download one of her free chapters for free, join her email list. If you didn't get in on that part, she also had a QR code where you could take, I think it was a quiz at the end. And I just sat there from a marketing perspective and was like, she's got her plan, right? And so when you're on stage and someone wants to know more about how they could benefit from what you're teaching, quizzes, I think, are really great. 
I'm working right now with a parenting coach where we've kind of mapped it out that we know she's had a couple hundred people go through the quiz. We know it takes about two and a half minutes for people to go through her parenting assessment style quiz. So when she's on stage, she has a QR code on the slide for people to take that quiz. I would say like 90 something percent of people who are in it are wanting to be a part of it and take that quiz. Then she has some banter and some stories for about two and a half minutes and then starts talking about the assessments that just hit their phone inbox. So you can make things that are dynamic, that they're actually going to get information while they're in front of you in person or online. And having a free ebook or a free resource that people are going to be excited about. If you're a speaker and an author, having that one free chapter that people can download and then, of course, the real secret sauce is you want it to be something that is that lead magnet, but then what's happening on the back end? Are they getting an email over the course of the next three, four, five days, introducing them to how they can work with you or buy a course or get on a wait list for something? So thinking through, based on your topic, what would be fun that could be interactive or that would be the takeaway they want to dive deeper in when they get to their hotel room if you're at a conference or that they're going to want to kind of save some tea and warm cozy Sunday morning time to go through your first chapter? Like, how can you bring it into their life beyond that conversation? So from your perspective, Chelsea, if you had to choose aside from a quiz, what mm -hmm. works best? A PDF, an ebook, an audio, a video? A, I, see, I don't know if I said yeah. checklist already or whatever. Yeah, but, I really like I mean, free mini courses. Like if you're speaking mm -hmm. on a topic, then, oh, you know, these are going to be three or four things you can do after today. And it drips out over three or four days. I think that's very effective because you're getting more know, like, and trust through the video. Another one that I'm seeing be very popular lately is a private podcast. So sometimes people don't want to log into another course platform, but you can record a private podcast that only people who get the link can access. And so that is really great, especially if your audience is someone who might be super busy and wanting to multitask. If you're speaking at a conference for mompreneurs, let's say, you know they're busy, you know they might be interested in the topic, and you can tease them uh, and get them excited to say, you can listen to this in your earbuds while you're washing the dishes, you know, while you're in the pickup line. So thinking through who your audience is and a little bit about how they like to consume, I would say um, free courses, free private podcasts, an ebook. Uh, something that requires them to have like a workbook so they can continue to do the work or a quiz to capture their interest right during the talk. All right, all right, great input there. So the question I normally ask my guests after the break is, yeah. okay, it's time to burn a little bit here and share an embarrassing <laughs> moment from your speaking career that mm -hmm. left you red-faced at the time, but a valuable lesson was learned and it would be something that you would advise other speakers not to do. So- mm -hmm. You're up. I'm happy to share this. So I'm actually someone who's neurodivergent. And so I now know more about the types of accommodations that help me to feel grounded and supported while I'm in front of people. But I was on a panel discussion at a big event in Florida. And the, I felt like I was the least famous person on this panel. <laughs> I knew everybody uh, else on the panel. And I was so nervous that I brought, I brought notes, but because I was nervous, people would think I was crazy for wanting to read from notes. I didn't. And I did speak from my heart. And so there was some passion and excitement, but I completely, like, if you ask me what I said to this day, I have no idea what I said. I thoughtfully prepared the notes, but then I ignored my needs and just kind of went off on a tangent. I got some good feedback in some ways because people were like, it really just felt like you spoke from your heart, but I didn't actually hit on the topics that I wanted to. And so maybe it was it played out how it was meant to. But now I would say if I was going to be in front of a group, I actually prefer to have notes or cue cards, even if I'm in front of people. It it works with my brain much better. All right. So you right made an interesting point there. And I want to dive into that a little bit more. And that is you didn't touch on the topics that you really wanted to touch on. So in your opinion, mm -hmm. how many main topics should one have in a presentation? Hmm. Well, this, I think it would depend on, this was in particular a panel presentation. So we had questions that we knew would be kind of passing the mic. But I think if you're doing more of like a keynote or a solo presentation, three, for me, like I have ADHD. I know that if, it, if, if too much is covered, it's hard to really grasp and get excited about implementing. I'm someone 
especially in the topics that I speak on and teach on. I'm sure it's different in different niches. But for me, I want someone to walk away and feel like they could implement something, get a little bit of a dopamine hit, feel like they learned something and be able to walk away. And if I try to cover too much, then they're going to be like, wow, that was interesting, but maybe not boil down what they're actually going to be able to implement or try. And for me, that's what I, I really want my, anytime I'm speaking for people to feel more empowered and like they can take some action. So I try to boil it down to three and have some like implementable tasks or steps or screenshots on the slides in between so they can maybe actually implement something and walk away feeling like they got something out of it. Well, so now, Chelsea, I want to give you a couple of minutes to tell people a little bit more about what it is that you do. And we've talked about funnels, and I think you have mm -hmm. a tool that might be helpful for people that are struggling with, all right, what should I, you know, how should I set up a funnel? What should I offer yeah. my funnel? Whatever. Yeah. So if you could speak on those points for a couple of minutes, that'd be great. Absolutely. So my overarching brand, my business is called Intuitive Business by Design. I like to help people blend proven strategy with their own intuition or even just vision of what they want their business to look and feel like. And at the end of the day, you're the only one that has to live with the consequences for better or worse about the decisions you make about how you run your business. And so I like to foster that. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one intensive sessions. I also run a group membership for people who just need some processing, some community, some brainstorming. And I also own a marketing agency called the Intuitive Marketing Collective, where we do simple websites, funnels, email marketing, and kind of all the backend stuff that you don't want to do. It's not your zone of genius, but we love taking care of that for our clients. And I do have a, it's a free quiz, right? I was talking about a quiz as a great lead magnet. And I really find this quiz to be helpful because it's going to ask you questions about where you're at in your business based on what you have in place already, website, different funnels, email marketing, social media, super simple to fill out. And based on the answers, it calculates which one of four types of funnels would be the best bang for your buck. If you were going to start here, instead of worrying about things that don't matter for your business for 12, 13 steps down the road, to look at right now, do you need a social media funnel? Do you need a lead magnet funnel, a sales funnel? Do you need to string them all together? And it actually gives customized recommendations as well as software tips if you're not sure what type of software would fit what you're trying to do. So it's a great bunch of value packed into one free little quiz and I'd be happy to share that in the show notes, I'm sure. Yeah, so we'll definitely be sharing Chelsea's website, social media profiles, and a link to the quiz that she mentioned in the show notes down below. So definitely check that out. Any final words of wisdom for an aspiring speaker, Chelsea? I think if anything, maybe I'm probably the, um, you said you haven't necessarily spoken to a, um, as many people who are doing the type of speaking I do to grow awareness. I would say if someone is listening and is like, am I ready? You know, am I ready to start getting in front of audiences is just to, to practice. Practice by doing social media, practice by getting your voice out to the world, host your own podcast, like just practicing getting your voice out to your ideal audience in whatever way could feel a little bit messy right now. But then to think about the ability to get in front of other people's audiences that already exist and might really desire what you have to offer. And it can just be a different way of growing awareness of your brand and what you do and it doesn't have to completely be one or the other, right? Um, I'm sure there's lots of people who do just speaking. This is your profession. But for me, I kind of get to dance into it and dabble into it and make it fun. And so if you haven't really staked your claim as being a professional speaker, you can still get your voice out to the world through platforms that you run or collaborating with others. All right. Well, such fantastic advice, Chelsea. And I want to thank you so much for being my guest on this episode of the Spotlight on Speaking show. To my listeners and viewers out there, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. As always, I wish you the greatest of success in all that you do, and may this year be your greatest year yet. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. This has been the Spotlight on Speaking Show with Brett Ridgway. Be sure to join us every week as we interview speaking industry pros and have them share their best tips for building a profitable speaking business. Until next week, thank you for tuning in. And remember to visit our website at SpotlightOnSpeaking.com so you can enjoy even more great episodes like this one. While you're here, be sure to subscribe via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Spotlight on Speaking Show. Until then, 
Our sincere best wishes to you for the greatest of success as you work to build your own profitable speaking business.